Hey everybody, welcome back to the big board. Seems like it's been a while since I have made a video. And you can tell that's the case because I haven't got myself a chair. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Third World War. And you may be looking at this map or set of maps and thinking, hmm. Kev clearly did not pass geography. But what I'm doing is looking at the GW's Third World War and looking at different map segments to try and understand a little bit more about the victory conditions and what my opponent uh, may or may not be playing. <coughs> so on the far left hand side, we've got the Norwegian uh, Arctic uh, front maps, our map. And in the center, we have the southern portion of the Western European area. Then we have the southern, uh, the southern front map and then the Balkan front map as well. And I don't have the Persian Gulf up because I've already done what, what I need to do in that regard. So, I will talk about that in a second. So, whenever you look at a big game like this, I always feel, uh, particularly after last night, after playing last night, I really want to make sure that I get the most value out of the experience and play to the best of my limited ability in the given circumstance. And I think I, I did a fair amount of work on the Case Blue uh, set of maps and looking at the situation and assessing how each side might go about doing what it was uh, you know, tasked to do. In this particular game, you know, it took last night. It took a long time to get very far, even though we were fairly methodical, uh, or maybe it's because we were fairly methodical, and we didn't want to miss anything, and so we're trying to, you know, ease our way into the system. I, I had not spent a lot of time looking at the maps and looking at understanding what the victory conditions were for the various, you know, circumstances and situations. So let's have a look at uh, the, this section of the map first, the, the uh, Turkish Straits here. Uh, <coughs> and it's particularly interesting because in the game, the Soviets have a reserve of units that they have the option of choosing where they allocate them, which map set that they go to. And he elected to put them here. And then one of the very first actions that he conducted was indeed to uh, bomb in Istanbul with his honking big uh, equivalent of B-52s, whatever they are, I forget what they're called right now. And did lots and lots of damage to the Turkish units that are in that hex. And I was thinking, oh gee, well, it's, you know, that's interesting, why would he do that? And of course, there's this... A Black Sea raid that can be conducted out into the Aegean here. And that uh, will uh, set up uh, two things. Firstly, it's going to change how shipping works for NATO and uh, changes supply. Uh, so, probably three things changes supply in that area for Turkey. And then the third thing it does is allocates victory points. And it's 14 victory points for. Uh, less the turn number. So if it's turn one, you get 13 VPs. If it's turn five, you get nine, whatever the case may be. So clearly, if you can achieve, you know, capture this hex and then uh, have a unit on the straits and uh, you can then execute this, uh, this, uh, this strike on the Aegean. <coughs> so it's interesting. Uh, that, why is that important? It's important because uh, the Soviets start with 92 victory points and they only need 55 additional victory points to obtain a marginal victory and about 80 or 90 further, uh, uh, 80 or 90 total extra victory, victory points to achieve a strategic victory or an overwhelming one of those, I forget which it is. So when you start looking at all the different maps and where the victory points are allocated. They're allocated in situations like this, which is one of the big one-time chunks you can acquire that can't be taken away from you. Uh, uh, Northern Iran on the Persian Gulf maps has 13 victory points, actually 14 victory points. The southern portion of Iran has 14 victory points available. 
The Turkish Straits is worth 14, as I mentioned. Turkey itself is worth 10. Southern Italy is worth, uh, in the southern maps, uh, Italy is worth 38 in total. So, how do you get victory points? You get two VPs for a major city. You receive one VP for a port that's by itself, not on an island. Uh, minor towns are worth a VP and airfields are worth a VP. So it's a straight count them up and rack them up, stack them up. And oil fields also count. Uh, neutral countries don't count except for the oil fields. And that's how you acquire points. So if I looked here, 38, 48, 50, 62, he would have 62 points, 72, 75, 76 points right there if he were able to conquer Turkey, keep northern Iran, and that's assuming he doesn't even get anything out of the south of Iran, which right now I, I have locked up. It's turn one of the game. Uh, and we invaded uh, Iran, uh, the US forces invaded Iran. But if he could uh, capture Italy, it does a couple of other things as well. It opens up a southern front. He could uh, amphibiously land in uh, Nice and come through this way and come into the southeastern corner of France and Germany and pick up an additional 10 or 15 VPs here. And I would then have to bleed forces off of this southern sector. He could if he conquered Italy, come through here, through Austria, into the southern part of Germany where there are two, four, six, eight, and more uh, VPs. So I think that's a dastardly plan, and I think that's what he might be, might be thinking about. Because in the meantime, Excuse me, I'll take a drink here. In the meantime, he can still uh, go all out on uh, his Western European attack, and he's going to pick up. He's going to pick up. You hear that screaming upstairs? That's what Catan does to you. When you play Settlers of Catan, two kids playing, or Catan, whatever it's called, uh, they yell at each other about the rules. Uh, we have, uh, he has all these opportunities here to capture all these larger cities. That's going to get him up into the 80s or 90s and an overwhelming victory. He also uh, conducted an amphibious and airborne landing in Norway. And uh, Norway has 15 victory points at risk. So there are a lot of uh, high risk targets that I have and I have a, limit, a limited number of units to be able to support uh, the defense of all these different situations. So I'm going to put my thinking cap on and work out how I'm going to counter his, if this is his indeed his strategy. I've got to put my thinking cap, thinking cap on and work out how I counter that approach. Let's talk about this again some more. <laughs>